welcome to our learners to the audio visual session on extraction of edible oils i am nitish lecturer in food processing technology welcome you all to this e learning session so before we begin with extraction of edible oils and fats we must know what are fats and oils fats and oils are nothing but lipid molecules that have immense role in the functioning of our body they are present in our membranes they are energy storehouses as well as they are an important component of the hormonal functions here is a classification of edible oils and fats we see that we get fats and oils from animals from plant sources as well as from the fish which is known as the marine oils in the vegetable oils we have divided them into animal uh, vegetable fats as well as oils the oils are obtained from the oil seeds that we commonly know like mustard seeds cotton seed olive oil rice bran oil corn oil groundnut oil the fats are the oils which are on the solidifier side I and mean, they are more solidified at room temperature the examples are cocoa butter coconut oil palm oil the oil seeds in plant give rise to seedlings these seedlings during the germination stage as well as in the initial stages of growth are incapable of producing their own food because they do not have chlorophyll so oil seeds provide the seedlings with the nutrition in the form of oil so the oil is present in oil seed throughout the germ cells and they must be ruptured either by heat or by pressure during the extraction of oil from oil seed this is the proximate composition of the oil seeds that are usually consumed in india now the extraction of an oil seed is aimed at producing maximum amount of oil with minimum cost with optimum retention of the organoleptic as well as nutritional properties so prior to extraction some post harvest processing steps are necessary for efficient extraction of oil the first stage is the proper handling drying and storage this steps involve three important practices the first practice is to dry the oil seeds by sun drying or mechanical drying to moisture level at about 7% this is done to prevent the degradation of oil by the enzyme activity or by the proliferation of microorganisms secondly we have to clean the seeds to get rid of sand dirt dust leaf stems weed stems weed seeds stones etc the third one is we have to maintain the temperature at about 25 degree centigrade the low temperature maintenance is very necessary because if we provide higher temperature deteriorative processes can occur enzyme reaction is fastened microbial spoilage occur toxin production occurs so all these three things should be maintained during the first stage the next one is the grading or sorting of seeds based on the quality this is done to get a uniform or homogeneous quality of oil but to get properly graded oil seeds expensive chemical testings are required which is often avoided in industries the next step is the pre treatment steps now pre treatment consists of a number of steps the fine the first step is the cleaning a final cleaning is to be done to get rid of sand wood pieces etc so that the corrosion of the mechanical equipments are prevented moreover if the contaminants are present local spores having higher temperatures are, are created which leads to fire hazards the next pre treatment is the dehulling or decortification in this step we get rid of the hulls that are present on the oil seeds by a impact dehulling method the oil seeds are impacted onto the surface of the equipment 
where the hulls break away and this being lighter are removed by aspiration or by blowing air. This helps in removal of waxes and pigments which helps in the betterment of the oil quality. The next step is the size reduction and flaking. The size reduction is done in crushing mills and flaking is done in flaking mills. Now the size reduction is done to rupture the oil bearing cells and facilitating the oil extraction. While flaking is mainly done for those oil seeds which are subjected to solvent extraction because this increases the surface area in which the solvent come, comes in contact with the oil seeds. Moreover, the height through which or the depth through which the solvent has to travel in order to bring out the oil from oil seed also gets decreased. Now coming to the extraction of oil. After this pre-treatments or the post-harvest treatments, now our oil seeds are ready for extraction. Three types of extraction methods are traditionally followed. The first one is the mechanical pressing. The mechanical pressing is done with the help of a screw press. Now a screw press is a machine. Just see, we have a screw inside a barrel with increasing diameter. So as the oil seed progresses through the barrel, the pressure on the oil seed is increased because the area decreases. As this happens, the oils are removed through the slots provided on the barrel surface. We get the crude oil from the slots and the oil cake or the de-oiled mill is ejected out from the barrel. The advantages of the screw press is that minimum labor involvement and this is applicable only for high oil bearing seeds. This is the disadvantage and another advantage is that continuous oil extraction can occur by using screw press. Moreover, the maintenance cost of this machine is high due to high wear and tear. Next coming to solvent extraction. The principle is a preferential dissolution of oil from oil seeds with a liquid solvent. The solvent used obviously are organic solvent like pentane, hexane, heptane, octane. However, the choice of solvent will depend upon the solubility of oil in the selected solvent, the cost and safety. It is expected that the residual oil content in the oil seeds after a commercial solvent extraction should be below 1%. Here is a flow chart that shows the solvent extraction process. After the pre-treatments, we get a wet cake and a micella after the solvent extraction process. What is a micella? It is a combination of about 70 to 80% solvent and 20% oil. So this may, must be distilled in order to get back the solvent as well as to get the crude oil. And the wet cake which still contains the solvent has to be desolventized, toasted, dried and cooled so as to use them as animal feed. The advantages of solvent extraction are that they are efficient enough or better to say they are more efficient than mechanical, uh, mechanical expression techniques because the residual oil content in mechanical expressed oil cake is about 7 to 8 percent while it is 1 percent in case of solvent extracted oil cake. Next, this is applicable for oil seeds with low oil content and the solvent can be reused while the limitations also are measured. Firstly, the solvents are all organic solvents and hence they are flammable. So there is always a potential risk of fire hazard. Moreover, this is expensive process because the solvents used are also expensive. Next, the drying, toasting, desolventization of the solvent from the oil cake as well as the missile are involved which uh, requires higher energy. The third extraction process that is followed is a pre-press solvent extraction. This is a combination of the previously two techniques studied. Here we uh, subject the pre-pressed solvent cake to the solvent recovery uh, to the solvent extraction unit. 
in this what happens the 7 to 8 percent oil that still remains behind in the oil cake gets extracted by solvent extraction and in this way we save on energy as well as the nutritional quality of oil is better since we are talking of extraction of edible oil let us also talk about the extraction of animal fat which is known as rendering rendering is nothing but a process of stabilizing animal fat with heat in the presence or absence of water if it occurs in absence of water it is called dry rendering if it occurs in presence of water it is called wet rendering the wet rendering occurs in an equipment in which steam is directly injected in the raw material at 50 psig for, for 4 to 8 hours then the contents are allowed to settle down for 2 hours the fatty materials being lighter float on top and the water and the settled matter remains the downward side the recovery of fat by wet rendering is higher than dry, dry rendering but the limitation is that an additional cost is there because water has to be evaporated from the crude animal fat in case of dry rendering we have a dry rendering unit where steam is not directly injected but a star but starters are present in order to distribute the heat that comes out of the jacket outside to avoid the burning of animal fat this occurs at 17 psi for 3 to 4 hours without addition of moisture the moisture is only that which is present in the animal mass disadvantages are it is less laborious however yield is good enough but lower loss of nutrients because external moisture is not used with this we come to the end of the extraction of edible oil and fats these are the references and i would suggest you to see the council website where the e-content has been uploaded for any of your queries thank you and happy learning